interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Episode 4, The Dark Tale Teller, with Jack Resire. Welcome to the Cyber Distortion Podcast, Season 3, Episode 4 now. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, you know, Kevin and I talked about this in our last episode, that we were so excited for stepping it up one step further now. And and this is our step up. I mean, when we're done here, your guys are going to be like, oh, my gosh, they really brought this one. They went <laughs> in deep in their pockets and pulled out the jack of all trades <laughs> specifically and uh, and brought it to the show. So I am so happy to to get rolling on this. Kevin, are you happy to get rolling on this one? Darknet Diaries, are you kidding me? Jack Recider, are you freaking kidding me? I'm yeah, here. let me just say this. <laughs> hey, he's here. He made it, dude. I, it's almost like I can't even really believe it, to be honest. But I'm serious. I'm serious, Jason, when I say this, dude. If we didn't record another episode this season, let's just say somebody comes to us hypothetically and we can cure cancer if we don't record another episode this season. <laughs> we on. still win, dude. Oh, my God. We still win. This is, this is greatness, man. Yeah. So, uh, Jack, I mean... Come on, man. What, what can I really say about you? you, you in, in our industry, you are the definition of success. You're giving back to the community through your podcast, dude. And you've mastered the art of storytelling to the point where everybody that's ever listened to your podcast says the same thing. I'm just, I'm hanging by every word. I can't wait till the next episode. It's like the ultimate true crime meets cybersecurity style of podcast. And it's amazing, dude. And I know that takes skill, that takes commitment, that takes passion, that takes a crap ton of time and effort. And believe me, Jason and I know when it comes to creating content, how much time and effort it is, and it ain't easy. Yeah. So for that, I commend you, sir, and welcome. Well, welcome to the show. I want to hire you as my PR person. This is amazing. <laughs> Hey, I'll do it. You're so kind. <laughs> I just I just yap into the mic. I don't I don't know about all that. Uh, yeah, but you do it. You do it so well. You yap eloquently. Oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it takes. It is definitely a craft. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I do take so, it like, very seriously. Yeah, tell us a little uh, bit more about like the passion behind it. Like, like what does it really take, man, to like get to that point where you you're you know you're going to weave a story of of uh, intrigue in it and and really spark your listeners to want to, you know, hang on every breath that you're going to yeah. spit out. Yeah, I really do. I do. I want, 
I mean, I was just talking with someone the other day who was listening to me at 2x. And I was like, no, not you look going too fast. <laughs> I want you <laughs> to, I want to be the podcast that you like so much that it's so dense. It's so great. It's so wonderful that you slow this down and be like, whoa, this is good stuff. I got, I, in fact, I'm going to even go crazier than slow it down. I'm going to pause it, think about it. I'm going to back it up. I want to hear it again. Like that's <laughs> the level of, of quality that I'm trying to deliver here is really just as close as I can to masterful storytelling. Right. And so to get there, I had to study what the, what the experts are. You know, this is uh, Ira Glass from This American Life, Roman Mars from 99% Invisible, Jad Abumrad from Radiolab, and even going back further, Paul Harvey from the radio and uh, oh, yeah. Rod Serling from, you know, Twilight Zone. Like to me, these are, these are storytellers that just have mastered their craft. So how are they doing it? What are the tricks? And so they've, you know, given interviews and they've talked about how they do it and stuff like that. And this is what I was really absorbing at the beginning, even meeting some of these people to ask them even further, deeper questions to get as best as I can, you know, and then trying it, going and putting on those voices, trying to write like them, doing it exactly the way that they do it to understand that, to peek inside the world. And then that gives me kind of a new perspective of how I could write from my perspective, right? And and yeah, I, I just really spent a long time working on my craft for storytelling. Wow. Well, he's done a good job. I mean, it, it, if there's anybody that I've seen that can tell a story, it's definitely you. Every episode I've listened to, I'm like, wow. I mean, it really is an art. There's an art to it. And I don't think it's possible for everybody to learn that art i think it's somewhat uh inherent yeah i, to so be honest. I think um you know when i was first starting it up i was wanting a show that took like a high drama version of or a high production version of some of these cybersecurity stories we hear right so data breach five hundred thousand credit cards stolen holy cow that's a huge story let's hear yeah. it yeah. and the way that it was delivered in the in the podcast or the news was very dry um, just as a matter of fact, it was not very exciting. It was just like today on the data breach, 500,000 credit cards next on the news. And it's like, okay, well, hold on. I got a lot of questions. I want to hear it. How did it happen? Tell it to me. And there wasn't anybody like doing it that was crafting that story. It was, it was either just commentary about, well, if you had an organization that had a breach like that, this is what I would do. And, and it, I wasn't hearing that. Just let me like, this is a, this is a big deal. And, and I think it's, there's a lot of high drama in here why isn't it shining in the way it should? And I, and I could not find that. Right. And so that's where I was like, crap, do I have to make this myself? <laughs> I want to hear this. <laughs> and that's why I, I have so much passion here is because I'm my first listener. I want to hear these stories and I want to hear them the best that they possibly can be told. And so I want a high standard just for myself because I, I want to hear good stuff. So, so that's kind of my, my idea. That's the driving forces how is this where's the good story in this where's the story in this story right and and so a lot of times what i'm what i'm doing when i'm crafting stories i'm looking for direction so we're going we're starting the story in this direction however it's going to take a total 90 or 180 degree turn and end up the story's going to end up in a totally different direction and so i love these direction turning points right and so when somebody comes on my show they don't necessarily think like that um, you know, somebody tried to hack into a, a place and they stole all this stuff, whatever. And okay, that's a cool story. But tell me the time that you failed. Tell me what was your first attempt. Uh -huh. Tell me how you got caught in these other ones. Right. And so these are the ones that are really well, I wasn't even trying to get into that building. That wasn't even the building I was trying. Okay, well, now I've got something even more exciting. How the heck did you get in that building? Right. <laughs> so your first attempt was here. We were going in that direction, but it all went wrong. There was a security guard that just didn't look at you right or whatever. And now you had to switch into a different building or duck out of the way, or you, lo you got lost in the laundry cart and ended up in a park lot down the road, whatever the case is, <laughs> I love that. Let's totally move it sideways. And so, yeah, a lot of people totally miss that. They, they think, well, I'm not going to highlight my my failures or where we started or what our intention was. I'm only going to talk about what, what we ended on. And I think that's yeah. where the fun of it is, is, whoa, this didn't work going this way. It didn't work going this way. We ended up in a totally new direction. And those are the that's the kind of stories that I really love is the ones that take all these twists and turns. Well, you're saying something that is reminding me of a situation that Kevin and I were in. We were interviewing a very large organization that had a very large publicly known data breach. And when, and we were trying to bring them on our show and we were saying, look, um, 
we want to highlight the failure in all of this as a comeback success. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that if we can't talk about the failure. And they're like, oh, we refuse to talk about the failure. We're done. We're done talking about that. We moved on from this. We're like, that's fine. You can choose to do that. But not speaking about it and then using it to highlight your success as a result is doing a detriment to you. And, and to your point, also bringing up that we all fail. Cybersecurity is a very complicated task for all of us. You know, we always say we have to be right 100% of the time and a hacker has to be right once. And that once is a failure for us that if we're doing the right things, we can recover from it and we can, we can turn it into a success. So we have to be willing to talk about those things. And you reminded me of that in that, yeah. in that story. The other thing I was thinking of is, um, you know, when we go to a conference, we're looking around. We want to meet other people at conferences, but most of us are introverts. And so it's really hard to meet yeah. other people, right? But what we would love to meet are the people who share the same struggles as we do. And if we're sharing those struggles openly and saying, yeah, well, I really keep failing at this. I can't get through this. I can't fix this. I always keep having this problem then I think that'll attract the people with the same problems as us to be able to help through it or attract the people who have solved those problems to get some advice from them. And I, I think that's where we bond the most at these conferences is when we find people who have the same struggles as us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And well, everybody in our industry's had those struggles too. Yeah. I mean, if, if you've been in this industry long enough, you've certainly failed many times. And the best thing about failure is that you always grow. You always grow and get better. Yeah, I mean, so you shouldn't be ashamed of failure at all. So I want um, to kick it off with a quick question for you. Since we've already kind of went through a, a, a very good dialogue, uh, I would I would have start this one with a question for you. And kind of taking a step back and looking at when you were getting started and you were putting things and these ideas together, you know, when you look back now and there's been so much growth and recognition over the things that you've done. Did you ever, when you were starting it out, you know, did you foresee getting to the point where you had this much success? And granted, you were probably starting off with a different point in mind, right? Educating people or telling a really good story, feeling the niche of, of that excitement, you know, when you hear these stories, all the things you were just talking about. But did you foresee that this might grow into this large of a success? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw it's possible, right? You look at YouTube and you see people with millions of subscribers and you're like, ooh, you know, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe, I don't know. And, you know, you, you expect, you, you, you hope one day. But I think yeah. what was interesting was um, I, I felt like, I felt like I was trying to catch up to everyone else, right? So I saw all these other creators, these podcasters, these YouTubers that had created these big things, and I was trying hard to catch up to them. And I didn't quite have the mindset of just being a leader beyond them. I was always just trying to catch up. So I was doing exactly what they were doing to try to catch up to them. And at some point that did switch where I felt like I did surpass a lot of the people I was trying to catch to. And that kind of gives you this new space of, wait a minute, what is, uh, <laughs> I'm looking around here, my, my competition is kind of gone and now I'm, now I'm carving my own space in the world. And that is the part that I would, I didn't ever expect is that I could be this, uh, person just going through the snow, finding my own trail, uh, my own trailblazer. Right. And, and yeah, that, I, that I wasn't expecting. I was kind of expecting to just kind of follow best practices and follow along what other people have told me, but not quite becoming uh, it's just stand out in the field like the way I am. Hmm. That's well, I'll say mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've definitely gotten there. I I want to take this opportunity to spit some stats at you because I was looking at some of your subscribers and looking at your YouTube channel that's got over 350,000 subscribers. Your Twitter account for Dark at Diaries has over 120,000. Your personal account, the Jack Wright Reciter account has 146,000. But then I started looking at downloads and I'm like, oh my gosh. I looked at, you have two episodes that are now over a million downloads. That's insane. Mm -hmm. And then you've got three other episodes over 900,000. So they're wow. almost to a million. And then a dozen more, I, literally a do, over a dozen more 
at over 800,000 downloads. So I, I, I thought about that, and then I remembered an episode I heard where you were being interviewed, and you were talking about evolving and how you were trying to find yourself the first 40 episodes, just trying to find your groove and fine-tuning your style. And, and I know I'm paraphrasing that, but looking back on that, when you were in that moment doing those first 40 episodes, you know, how do you, how do you look at that now and measure and define personal growth? Because you're, in my mind, you're there, man. You are like, you're at the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. So how do you motivate yourself to keep going and finding more ways to yeah, get I think, better, uh, I guess is what I'm trying I'm to really ask. I'm really fascinated with uh, the stories that keep coming my way, right? So I, I'm, I'm continually interested in, and, and maybe this is kind of what's happened all my life is I've always been fascinated by computers and technology. And so making sure that I'm connected with that excitement, that passion, that ex that interest in the story, I think is really crucial. There's, a, there's, you know, it's, it's gotten to the point where every episode, there's a whole bunch of people who don't like that topic or that guest or whatever the case is. And th th I realize that I'm not going to be able to please everyone every time. And it's, and you know, it's just not possible. And so one thing I have to be true to is to please myself. If this is a story that I personally mm -hmm. love and I'm excited about and I'm passionate about, then I think that is the, that's the guiding light that I need to just stay on and go forward with and not really listen to the people saying, oh, I don't like this or that. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit for, you know, there's a little bit for everyone here. It's I'm not going to expect you to, to like it all. Some people do like it all, which is fascinating, but um, yeah, it, that's just one of the things is what's driving me to be more excited about the day or these stories that just pull me in and I can't stop thinking about it. And that's the stuff that uh, I, I just gra gravitate towards. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that as it's because Kevin was pointing out that is a distinction, right? And and for you specifically, you're at a position uh, where you can you you've already proven yourself to be able to drive it in a direction where you can have huge success. And the litmus test through that practice has been you yourself as the first listener to your content. Uh, so that's a good measure for you to continue to build off of and say, yeah, this doesn't sound exciting. This mm -hmm. is, this is, I don't like it. So I'm going to refine it because people, your audience has identified with that same way of thinking now. And, and, you know, I don't, you know, some people say like when you become very successful, you kind of get to the point where you feel like, okay, what do I need to do next? And I have to reinvent myself and do something different. You know, in your case, you have the recipe. The recipe is working and it shows in the numbers and the downloads and in, in the content that people are receiving from you. Do you feel like you need to change, like to freshen it up or change the perspective or is that too risky? Well, I so I want to keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on and the, the world is changing. So I need to change with the world. Right. So if the rhetoric around what we do about this kind of attack or what these what we think about these criminals or whatever the case is a change is i need to change with that and that that i think is tricky right we we all see like oh what these zoomers are doing on tiktok and it's cringe and we can all point and laugh and snicker at like wow those those kids don't know what but you know the the truth is that those are the kids that are going to, uh, you know, take over the world at some point they're the ones that are going to yeah. assume power yeah. and and we would have done the same thing if we had TikTok when we were kids. And so I don't like yeah. to point and cringe and laugh and, and say, well, that's so cringe. I like to, especially when th when I don't understand something or think it's cringe, I like to lean into it even more and say, how can I do it? Where's my turn? <laughs> I want to try. <laughs> What's this? Because I don't understand it. And I lean into it, right? And it introduces me to whole new cultures and places and and concepts and technologies that you know, from the outside just looks, looks stupid, but from the inside, it makes so much sense and it's, and it's exciting and it's fun and it's silly or whatever the case is. And so this, I think is, is where I'm always going to be changing. I like staying on uh -huh. point uh, for technology and not becoming behind or like a fossil in some way of like, yeah, back in my day, we had actual to, uh, keyboards you can type on now you just wave your hand <laughs> and somehow it knows what word you want to say I, I can't adapt to this and so 
I, I want to try all the new stuff and see how all this is working in order to stay current. Well, we're in technology. We almost have to, right? I mean, it's like in, with AI and everything that's coming out, things are going to, oh man, I, ju I just kind of worry that things are just going to eventually outgrow me. Technology is going to outgrow me and I'm in technology. That concerns me a little bit is that, you know, you mentioned TikTok. I've never had a TikTok account. So I don't know the first thing about TikTok. <laughs> I have a hard enough time dealing with YouTube shorts and trying to get YouTube shorts created for our for our podcast page. Yeah. So yeah, there's I mean, a lot to know. There's a tough balance, though. And going back to what you said a minute ago, which is like if I'm following just my own, you know, idea of what I think the show is going to be, it might it might just go off the rails. It might be cringe. It might be too self-centered. It might not, you know, be listening to whatever the people are wanting. And I could just alienate a lot of people, whatever. And, yeah. and I think one of my biggest reasons for growth is that I spent so much time not so much trying to reach new audiences, but delivering even better content to my current audience, right? And so my one of my biggest uh, factors for just measurement, right, of growth, really, it, it was it's kind of strange to think of it as a growth measurement, but it was how long are my is my audience listening per episode, right? And so are they listening to 30% uh. of the episode, 60% of the episode, or what's the average completion rate? And this I wanted to get as high as possible. So if you started, how can I hook you to keep you there? And if you're in there for two minutes, how can I keep you there for 10 minutes? And okay, so you listen to a whole episode. How do I make you listen to the next one and the next one? And so I was actually looking at things like, okay, the average number of subscribers is listening to five episodes, 10 episodes, 15 episodes. And this to, this to me was such an important metric because if I can get them to love it in a way that just they just can't stop listening to it they're addicted they just want one after another after another it's just there's never enough for them then i know that i've got something real special there and so i'm shifting from oh just do what i want and forget about what all the people are asking for or whatever and here i'm saying no i want to really over deliver on what you think this show is and just surprise you every time and so there is something like that in my head as well of how can I make this even better than the last one and, and even more surprising and keep you, keep you as someone who may have been here for 145 episodes to be able to still teach you something or tell you a story that you just never even thought of in this light or aspect or something like that. And so with that, I often have to do some rediscovery myself of, you know, take a long walk and be like, okay, here's, here's how I initially think of this story. What's my second thought? Okay, it's this, but what's my third thought? Okay, that third thought is actually an interesting take. Let's throw that in because I don't know if a lot of people are thinking it through like that. And so this is kind of fun to just kind of meditate on a lot of these um, ideas and stories. And, and, and you know, because we're, I mean, we're dealing with all kinds of crazy stories. We're dealing with, you know, whether or not the FBI is in the right to do this or whether or not that app is illegal or legal or this person did something that is right or wrong. Like there's a lot of ethical places that we go in the show and it's kind of fun to give somebody just some thought dogs to chew on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I think, I think that's, I think that is probably the most intriguing part of what you put behind the show because it shows that you're weaving a story. And I use the word weaving on purpose. It's not just telling a story. It's telling a story with a purpose, a guide to get to somewhere, to prove a point, to hook them, to give people satisfaction out of the story that you're, you're actually telling. Um, it has a rhythm, a, a breath to it, right? Mm -hmm. When it, when it goes through it. And, and to do that, you know, he, listening to you makes sense that it takes some, some deeper type of retrospection to yeah. get to the point where you can really be, um, identify with what you feel might be the next piece that you want to put into the show that you're, that you're constructing as you go through. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's correct. Um, I really like to synthesize the story, right? That's what I, that's the word I use, which isn't just like, okay, here it is. And there you go. The story is told, but it's like, no, hold on. I've been thinking about this story for a while and there's something that just doesn't add up. What, what do we do about this or whatever the case is? Right. And those are the things I think people also appreciate is just what's the meaning of all this and what, what is good. Cause it, it is interesting where, 
a lot of security just seems so black and white. Here's best practices, do it that way and you're good to go. But it's like, well, actually, there's a humans here and the humans make mistakes. And we've got people who are falling for phishing scams and, and all this other stuff that's happening that we've got to deal with this sort of wetware that we're dealing with. And, and <laughs> that it has a lot of emotions involved with it. And there's a lot of uh, morality dealing with a lot of this. And so it's very difficult to navigate these seas because it's out of the textbooks. They don't talk about this. Mm. And that's where I have the most fun is, is getting away from getting out beyond the, beyond the map. Right. And we're out where the dragons live. And it's like, let's figure this part <laughs> out. Cause this is a big mucky place. <laughs> See, see yeah. even when you're talking about this kind of stuff, Jack, you're, you're taking me on a ride. I'm like, holy shit, man, this guy's good. It's like you hear the passion in your voice when you're just talking about it. You're not even recording an episode. You're just talking about what you do. Yeah. And you can hear it. And it, it, it's, it's awesome. I, I remember hearing another interview where you were talking about um, reading some of the books like Out on the Wire. You mentioned that one mm -hmm. earlier. And the thing that, that really stuck out to me, though, you, you had a passion to want to be a great storyteller. You wanted to levitate people off their seats and keep them gripped uh, into the story. But when you started talking about chemicals in the oh, brain no, the, and how you, you broke up there. loved the idea of manipulating, I just thought it was so cool to manipulate those chemicals in the brain, like the dopamine and the oxytocin mm -hmm. when you're telling the story. Dude, I never thought about that before. Yeah, it, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing. The uh, the words you hear can trigger chemicals in your brain: uh, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, um, and more. And it's like uh, these things can give you extra feelings. They can give you you more uh, compassion for someone. They can give you more alertness or feel better about your life. Like the opposite would be cortisol, which makes you more alert and, and stressed out or something like that. Right. Oh yeah. And yeah. so w w how can I deliver? Like it's, it is wild that my words put chemicals into your brain that can give you a sense of, uh, w uh happiness and well being, And that is really fun to play in those, in those worlds of, how yeah. can I, how can I trigger more oxytocin? Like if you think about, I always like to think about as a, as a podcaster, what's the value I'm delivering to the listener. Right. And sometimes I just think about, I want to give them more uh, oxytocin and endorphins <laughs> and these kind of things, because it gives them, uh, I don't know, it gives well, them a overdose better feeling. them on oxytocin. Yeah, yeah, see, that's awesome. See, I that's figured awesome. that out too. And, and let me, how I use that is to manipulate Kevin. To make him do what I want. Oh, here we <laughs> so, go. That, Jason that's likes science, to talk yeah. his shit. That's for sure. <laughs> that's the science behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Jack, that leads to a, to another question, though. I, I, I know how much you put into coming up with the story and how you're going to interweave the twists and the turns in it. But do, do you ever get to a point where you're preparing for an episode and you just get stuck? Because I know we do, mm -hmm. um, but you've been doing this a lot longer than us, and and obviously you're a master at it. So I question: Are we the only ones that get stuck sometimes <laughs> no. trying to get creative? No, I I think uh, it's very common as a creator to get stuck. They, uh, I think there's a few different um, a few different places that I've been stuck um, early on. Right, you're just not sure what to do. You don't know what's right or wrong. You feel like you're in a dark forest, and you're not sure where the end of it is and you know that you could go like 10 different directions and you just have a different a difficult time picking out a direction to go and i think there is something that can just really slow you down there um the yeah the other i mean a couple of times like i said i had to kind of meditate on what's going on because where are my where are my principles here? I I want to be true to myself in some of the things I'm saying, and so sometimes I had to back up and be like, well, okay, hold on a second. Where do I stand on this issue? Where do I stand on that issue? Oh. And I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, what I do is not try to pick a side or an issue, but find the common ground between both sides mm -hmm. and then land on that, and then we can all agree. Okay, this is um this is something that we all agree on and then just kind of leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, I, I think everyone gets stuck. It's not just uh, you, but I'm having trouble thinking of when I got stuck. You know, I think you said something there too, that, that made me think about um, some of the episodes we had with uh, white dad hackers and the, 
uh, comparison to the moral compass of, hmm, okay, I feel a certain way about this, but I need to at least let the story unfold and, and let it be what it is and then decide, like, if it's so extreme on one side that I, I just can't publish it and I can't do anything with it, or if it's so, or if there's something in that story that has value that the listeners need to see. So, so with the white hat hacker, there are so many opportunities where they're just duping people. And when the job is all done, they feel bad about the fact that they did this trickery and got around people just to do a job. Right. And maybe someone lost their job as a result or, you know, a number of things could have happened. How do you deal with, you know, one step level? How do you deal with the moral impact of some of the stories that you're hearing that you might need to make a decision around how you're going to present that? You know, sometimes I, I don't understand what uh, what you know it's just something something is maybe just so awful or weird to me that i'm just like i don't understand why you did that like i'm sorry i'm missing this and they'll try to yeah. explain it and I, and I still won't get it and then i'll be like let's just go backwards right let's talk about your childhood or something and when we go back to childhood maybe they were bullied as a child or had this uh problem or whatever the case is and now it's starting to put into perspective. There wasn't both parents at home. They were on the road a lot. They uh, had a friend that was died of an overdose or something. You know, like something scarred them to the point where now they're just a little bit more, you know what, screw it. I'm not, I'm not an ally to the world. I'm an enemy to the world. And they've proved it to me. So now I'm going to just be an enemy. And so now you have this kind of attitude of how this character is coming into the story. And so now, of course, when they get this opportunity to steal some money or whatever, they're going to do it. And of course, that's not a white hat story, but it's, but it's one of these things where it's like an origin story of if I don't know yeah. why someone did it, let me hear your origin story. Uh, and then I think I have a better impetus of why. And I think that mm -hmm. does clear it up, and it it almost to the point where you're you're almost cheering on some of these people because you feel so connected with them. And this this again goes back to the oxytocin when somebody shares a sad part of their life with you, and they're very vulnerable when they're sharing that or whatever. You then sympathize with them. You you then think, oh, okay, this person's not you know they've had some tough time, and you and you're on their side. But then when the story goes all wrong and they got arrested in jail, and you're like, wait, why was I sympathizing with them? They're obviously <laughs> a terrible person, <laughs> and your brain gets all screwed up. And I love this kind of experience. One of my favorite movies is Princess Mononoke, and there are like all these factions in the movie where you really don't know which side to root for. And I love that feeling of. I understand why this side's doing that. And I understand why they're doing that. And I understand why they're doing it. But damn it, I don't know whose side I want to be on. And you just <laughs> kind of step back. And I love this kind of feeling of, okay, I, I, you know, I got to live vicariously through some of these characters. I was cheering them on, but now I'm, now I can just go back to my normal life and, and it's fine. And you get this weird feeling out of some of these stories where you're just like, wow, I went on a crazy ride there because you were invested emotionally in some of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You think about that, you know, and to your point, you just told the story. You've you've uh, pulled on the emotional strings of people as they've listened to this story, and now it's done. And and they walk away from that that episode, and and they have some level of emotional something, right, positive or negative. They're feeling something after that episode because yeah, they're the, they're the, they're fulfilled. What they're... you brought to them, yeah. So it goes beyond just telling a story. As you were just saying, it's the additional aspects of bringing an emotional feeling to those individuals. And you have a large number of them that are listening, that are getting this impact from you. Yeah, it's always fun, too, of like, you know, a lot of a lot of experts email me and say, oh, I'd like to be an expert on your show. And I'm like, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. interested in the experts. I want those people who are boots on the ground in the trenches during that event. And, yeah. and those people aren't always experts. Sometimes it's their first week on the job or whatever. And I love hearing these perspectives too, because they had to get through it. And what were the tools they used to get through this or what, what helped them? And how did they solve this with like little experience? 
And that is always exciting too, because you might know things and you might be screaming at them like, all you have to do is pick up this one tool and do this or whatever. And, and, and they just don't know at that point until they figure it out later. And, and, and then it's kind of fun just to kind of hear their brain of how they solve uh, work through these problems, because maybe yeah. attempt one would have solved it or attempt two would have solved it. And th that's kind of interesting just to hear how people sort through things to, uh, you know, troubleshoot, because, you know, a lot of times we don't see the, the troubleshooting aspects. And I, I really like seeing that. And somehow yeah, making it fun. That's what's fun. That's what's weird about it. A lot of this stuff I don't well, I don't think people are going to like. And then it lands and then they like, that was amazing. And I was like, it's just troubleshooting yeah. steps. Because it's, yeah. 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 Well, it's because you, you tie the realness to it, though. It's when, you, right. it's when you interweave those with your own personal stories and, you know, the bully that, that tried to steal your skateboard yeah. and, you know, and you those kind of things are. People deal with that, and, and that takes them back to who they were when they were a kid. Maybe they got bullied as a kid. And you said something earlier that was kind of funny about kind of rooting for the hero. It took me back to when we used to watch the show. Did you guys watch the show Dexter? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the, the killer? It's like, man, this, this show is so good. But you find yourself at some points rooting for this guy. Mm -hmm. And he's a serial killer. And you're like, but I kind of get it because I see his background. I hear his story. I, I, I feel his pain, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. When you were saying that, it reminded me of, you know, I think we all have some aspect of these stories in our personal lives. And when we hear the story being told from other people that have just slightly different aspects we identify and gravitate to and we hold on to it. We, in some cases, per compare it to our story and how we had to go through the trials that we went through and to get to where we were. And you find that a lot in the cybersecurity world. Now, I, I told Kevin this, I, I tell this story often, but one of the biggest reasons, besides Kevin dragging me into cybersecurity, one of the biggest reasons I went in was because I was hacked. My organization was hacked. And luckily, I had prepared enough prior to that that we were able to defeat it. But that process, that event was an event that will stick with me forever. So when I hear a story, I'm often thinking about my own story and the trials that I had to go through and the four days of no sleeping and starting to hallucinate. You know, and not getting to a point where I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. And I was just hoping that, you know, everything didn't fall apart. Those parts where you're on the edge of the cliff getting ready to fall off. That's what I'm identifying with that mm -hmm. same emotion. And, and those emotions are being brought up when you hear these types of stories. So I think a lot of people often are coming back to their own stories and identifying it that way. Yeah, I'm really big on pulling out emotion in the middle of the story, right? And it's it's silly because it's just like a technical story you're telling me. But I'm like, hold on, how did that feel? <laughs> and yeah. and uh, yeah. it's it's uh, it sucked. Yeah, it, but it's really fun because there's a lot of like at, you know at first I was like, well, hold on, we're gonna go through this is terrible. Why am I even bringing you on the show? I'm, I'm going to talk about the worst day of your life and I'm going to ask you all these details of it. <laughs> and like, I was really nervous at the beginning of, of starting the podcast. Cause it's like, why am I making someone suffer through this again? This is awful. Yeah. But as I did it a bunch of times, um, most of the guests were saying that was a, such a cathartic experience because nobody ever asked me how I felt when I did this and, and, and really got to dig down, you know, that you really felt like you squatted down to my level or whatever, uh, you know, <laughs> idea you can come up with in your head of like understanding me, right. You really, you yeah. really took the time and you didn't just write some sensational headline, um, crazy kid on skateboard hacked his mall, hacked the mall or something, you know, it's just like, no, uh, this is, this is my story. And, and, and it really, you told it. And, and I think this is kind of one of the goals of my show as well is I don't really need to be the first one to tell the story or the only one to tell the story. Or I my goal is to be the, tell the story better than anyone else out there. Right. So I don't care how many news agencies cover it. When it comes to me, my goal is to tell it better than all of the other ones. Yeah. And you've done that a lot of times on stories that have been retold. Um, a lot of the things when you first got started and you were you were basically telling the story of something that might have ha happened eight or ten years ago, but 
it's evident in the end product that that was your goal. Your goal wasn't to be the first, obviously. It's happening way afterwards. But you you did it so well that it kind of resurges this story out of nowhere and everybody's now suddenly interested in the story. I think that's pretty cool too to be able to retell it in a way that that re that revitalizes it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think it's a lot re- of fun. It's well, a guys, rebirth. We we covered a lot in this first segment and um let's take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to get started in that second segment and get a little bit deeper into some of this art of how you tell your stories and and some of the lessons you've learned along the way. Sounds good? Sounds yeah, good. Let's do it. All right. Yep. Jack Resider and Dark Net Diaries have built up quite the cult following. But did you know you can also purchase Dark Net Diaries swag? That's right. You can head out to their swag store and get some of the most amazing t-shirts, hoodies, and other types of swag in their shop. Just go to https colon forward slash forward slash shop dot darknet diaries dot com. You won't regret it. It's some killer artwork. We are having some awesome conversation with one of the heroes in our industry, Jack Recider, host of Darknet Diaries. And uh, Jason, I think we were up to a question on education. Educational resource. I'm going to hand that over to you. Yeah. So, Jack, you know, your podcast has not only captivated a large number of audiences, uh, but it also impacted the cybersecurity industry. And we hear this all the time. If you ask somebody, hey, if you heard of Dark Neck Diaries and they're in cybersecurity, 100% they know. They're like, yeah, I listen to it all the time. Right. But one of the things that, yeah, you know, as we dig into, this storytelling and some of the byproducts of what you get, you know, is that it, it raised awareness about security vulnerabilities because you were directly talking about actual things that have happened, you know, um, and it inspired individuals to even pursue careers because as we were saying in the first segment, you know, people will listen to these events that occurred and the challenges they had and how at the end, maybe, the characters became a hero and saved the day, right? And it, the story behind it, is, it, it ended up being so intriguing that people have been inspired to look further into it. And so when you look at it from that lens of being able to provide information in a, in a story-like way that is educational, um, you know, I think it's just awesome that you're able to deliver that. But how, how do you feel about that part of your content? and and the byproduct of what you deliver yeah i think um the you know hiding the hiding the broccoli in the in the good tasting sauce is is what i what you're talking <laughs> about there i i want to educate i think one of my hats is i love teaching i really do I, and it's not so much teaching as like here's a here's the osi model but it's more teaching of like um you know you ever go with like a a, a friend and they're like, oh, come with me. I got this really cool spot I want to show you. And, and you, I don't know, you walk down a path and then you get up on a hill and suddenly you can see like this beautiful view of the town or, or the nature or something. And you're just like, how did you find this? How did you ever discover this place or, you know, some cool restaurant or something? Because it's just so obscure and so rare in the world and so beautiful. And that's the kind of, I don't know what kind of teacher that is, but that's kind of what I want to do is I want to take you on this, on this vista and say, look at this part of the world. Isn't it amazing? And you, 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 there's just so much stuff flooding into your head at that point that you're just like, I have so much, I want to go home. I want to get my camera. I want to, I want to take photos of this, whatever. I got so (laughs) much research to do there. Are are there more of these like in the world, you know? And so you you just get, there's this sense of discovery. Maybe it's more of that than it is teaching Yeah. that I love doing, because if I can get you excited about this now, you have a million things you can go Google and go learn. And you got all these classes you can get into and stuff like that. And you know, no, nobody really listens to my podcast and said, oh, well, that was enough for me to go get a job. And there was that was enough for me to go get a cert to get a job, yeah. or to go train for it or or, or you know, lear, learn something or read a book or practice or whatever. And that's what I think is the hard part. That's the heavy lifting is getting people excited about, you know, and honestly, there's there's a lot of tediousness here. And, you know, as a security engineer, it was just problems thrown at me all day, every day. And that's that kind of, you know, bogs you down and 
at least sometimes you get frustrated. You're not solving things. And sometimes it's the same problems over and over. And, and so it's not always so exciting and glamorous. And um, to get people excited to come into this field is really cool to me to, uh, to, to be able to put it, put it on in such a way that does sound exciting and, and, and glamorous because there is a lot of exciting parts. It's just not every day that it's exciting. <laughs> that is so true. You, 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 would, you would make a great teacher, one. You would also make a great therapist, <laughs> two. Because you, you, you obviously have this, this desire to help people, too, that, that comes out in what you do. Uh, but I think, yeah, if, you, if, if the internet ever just shuts down for good and you can't do the podcast anymore... Dude, you'll be fine. Just go into teaching or go into therapy, and you'll 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 help. You'll still help thousands of people. It's That's funny you say that. No doubt about that. I feel like uh, as a security engineer, there was times where people just called me to complain, <laughs> and I was just I just needed to be a therapist yeah. to them, not an engineer to them, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm, I hear that it's slow. Yeah. Tell me more about how that makes you feel. <laughs> and and it was one of these um, interesting things of just like, okay, I'm glad I was able to tell someone have a good day or whatever. And and that was it. Well, they didn't really need me to fix anything. They just wanted someone to complain to. And so, yeah, yeah. it is kind of funny that you say that. Yeah. And sometimes in, in support roles uh, with IT, we have to find that and roll with it. We have to be the person that's basically the guy that says, you know what? I may not be able to fix your problem, but I'm going to make your day a little bit better. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to make you less pissed off at IT right now because I'm not going to be the enemy here. So you just kind of kill them with kindness. Mm-hmm. That also um, takes a special I, I kind of go, person too, though, man. You know, oh, especially yeah, when sure. you're constantly dealing with battles that you you are are trying to solve. And I'm speaking yeah. from pain right now, as you can't if you can't tell. But dealing with mm -hmm. these battles that that you're trying to solve, and and you're not making headway, and then you get your phone rings, and someone just wants to complain to you. You know, those, those are the moments where we're like, dude, I don't have time for this. I, I'll go. Call yeah. your call your wife and let her complain to her, your husband, and complain <laughs> to them because I'm not it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's one. There's another element, Jack, that I want to talk about here that's closely related to the verbal aspect of the podcast, but it's the visual element of what mm -hmm. you bring to the table too. Um, there's something very, very unique about the way you approach the look and feel of Darknet Diaries. And it's clear you have a theme. Um, it's clear you have color schemes. It's clear that you have a brand, so to speak. And so, you know, looking at that, I found my, myself being an artist myself. I found looking at the covers for each of your podcasts was just as exciting to me as listening to the podcast in some ways because they're so creative and so unique but they also help tell the story and and i know for a fact that you help with that conceptual design so can you talk a little bit to what that process looks like because it's done very well yeah the each episode has its own unique artwork which is completely unnecessary in the audio only uh podcast you don't need any artwork <laughs> you don't need any visual but it was, yeah. I think it was mostly for branding and marketing purposes at first, which is, you know, as people are scrolling social media or just scrolling the podcast apps, I want to there to be something that jumps out at you that's visually striking, that just grabs you and, and you just stop and stare at it for a few seconds before even looking at what is this? Like, what's the title of this? What am I looking at? Just hold on a second. Let me enjoy this for a moment. And and when you go to the website, it then it's almost like you're coming into this this world, this this place and it sets the theme and it sets the tone and you're like, Whoa, something's going on here. I gotta, I gotta find out. There's this, let me, let me keep exploring. Like I want to, I want to know more about this. Right. So that's, uh, that's the branding aspect of it. That's the marketing is pulling people into it through imagery. And since our world is yeah. a lot of imagery and social media and Twitter and Instagram, whatever, um, it really works well to work that out. It's totally optional. But if you think about some of, you know, music, music album covers, yeah. some of them are really amazing. And so that none of that was needed for any of that music. It was just kind of added on, but it's still some of the bands you can even imagine in your head. You associate to certain artwork yeah. because it's just that yeah, artwork comes to mind as soon as you think of the band. 
And so I kind of like that, this kind of synesthesia of there's the sound you hear and there's this visual thing that you picture at the same time and it mesh meshes together in your head. And I think early on, one of the things I did also is try to make like an online t-shirt shop. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was trying <laughs> with different graphics and not even sure like where to place the stuff. <laughs> it's harder than it looks, right? It's very hard. And and the first time I tried it was a total failure. And and so, you know, saying, wait a minute, I've tried this in the past. I've been working on more art and this kind of stuff. Um, let's try it again. So there, are, it does lend itself into really nice t-shirts at the end of the day, where there's like 50 different t t designs now in the shop. But yeah, I do. Uh, I do um, uh, quite a lot. I mean, it takes hours and hours just for me to come up with the concept art on on every episode because I, I don't want to have this cringy hacker in a hoodie kind of yeah. uh, thing that you might suspect. I want to really mash up some some striking ideas in your head and and give you something that goes well. You just maybe never thought of putting those two concepts together, or or just something really cool and, and artistic. So I. I ha I spend a lot of time either going through Pinterest or just s sketching things out on paper or using Midjourney to come up with ideas to uh, then give to my graphic designer to uh, then take those ideas and make them look really good and, and in our theme to put it together. So, Jack, like thinking about, you know, after saying all of that, one of the things that come to mind for me is in it's probably is it as fair of a question because you know when kevin and i are put together all of the work that we do uh both for the visual representation uh of this podcast episode as well as the audio representation you know we we have to put a lot of work into editing and and one of the fascinating parts though is and why we do it so much why we're willing to put in all of that effort is because we have so much fun just having these conversations like this, right? The cadence of learning something new, meeting someone new, forming new relationships and friendships. And, and the, I can't tell you how much we laugh and just have a good, enjoyable time recording these episodes that for, for us personally, we get a lot out of that. And so when you look back retrospectively at the episodes you have built and done, are there moments that maybe like off mic moments where you're having conversations with people and you're like, Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Right. That stick in your mind, kind of how those images stick in your mind. Gosh, I forgot about those moments. I'm glad you reminded me of that. There were, <laughs> there were quite a lot of uh, guests in the first few years where after the show, I was just like pumping my fist in the air, like, yes, I got so much good tape. I'm so excited about this. This was such a great guest. And I felt just so great about the whole experience. And and now, now I feel great about it, you know, certain guests, but I, maybe I'm more choosy or more uh, uh, research, you know, so I know that it's going to be great. Or maybe I've just been, I've had so many great guests that it's not a standout as it was. But yeah, I, my goodness, I used to love those experiences of, just having such a great audio, Gra grabbing great audio is just always such a great feeling. Yeah, to have those conversations. And, you know, I, I can say that having only done probably 20 or so episodes now, I don't even know, Jason, what number one, but we've done enough to where we get to a point where we take the breaks as we're recording, we're doing the interviews, we stop the, we stop the camera and we'll go off on a tangent or something in a break. And, you know, you start cracking up about something that you're, they're talking about. You're like, gosh, dang it. Why isn't the camera going right now? Cause that's hilarious. Mm. It's so funny when you do, when that happens. Yeah. Our problem is we'll do an interview and then, and, and we'll, we'll end up popping an episode and that episode is an hour, an hour and a half or whatever. But that interview went two hours and all of that extra time off camera, there was gold nuggets in there that, that we didn't capture. And I'm like, Kevin, okay, stop quit talking about this let's get on camera because we're talking about really good things and I, let's capture this you know so yeah, there's so many yeah. of those those opportunities that that we've had that and in retrospect i'm happy that we had those you know because that's part of it for us we always say and i think jack you were talking about this a few minutes ago earlier i think in segment one and it, it reminded me of this too i didn't bring this one up then but how much of community building this creates because as we do this work, um, 
the things that make us feel good about it are the things we can identify with. And those are the things in our, in our familiar communities that we're looking for. Like when we do live events, that is the thing that makes live events so much fun because the people that are showing up are people who can identify with what we're saying and talking about. And it feels like your people are there to, to, you know, understand and feel the feelings that you have felt when you were dealing with this stuff. Um, and, and so that's just an, a different take. I think community is an important part of what holds, you know, your shows together. I know it definitely is what shows our, holds our together, but is there an aspect beyond that for you when you think about community that you believe might add more value in the, in the work that you do? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think bringing people into the space is probably where a lot of the community comes in. Uh, so we have a discord channel with 20,000 members just yeah. for the darknet diaries, which is quite kind of crazy that, uh, just one podcast can generate that many users, but a lot of, uh, a lot of people coming in are, are new to the cybersecurity space or, or just getting their certs going or, or early in their career. And, um, yeah, it's really fascinating that they all have something to bond around, right? They connected to to each other through the show and uh, help each other in different ways, and and we make friends and stuff. But I think wow. that is uh, probably where, yeah. So so yeah, we we have community and in, uh, in that space and stuff. I think personally, I I try to be in the community, right? So I I'm not trying to so much make one as I am just like. I'm at this event, I'm at this conference, I'm in these Twitter circles or these Discord groups or whatever the case is to be present in the community. And I think that that is pretty important if you're trying to make a name for yourself or um, stand out in the cybersecurity space. A, a lot of times I'll see uh, speakers at a conference and I'll look them up on <laughs> online and there's just like no information about them. And I'm like, how do you not have any social media presence, any blog, any any place ever that you've done, like there's no, there's no talk you've ever given on YouTube or anything. And it's not like it's their first thing. It's just that they've never taken the time to be present in the community in any mm -hmm. way that I can notice. Right. And so I, I kind of sense that they're not quite in this community. They don't have the same uh, eyes on the same things that most of the people I think that are in the community have. And, and so where, I don't know, it's just kind of weird that they're in some other community. And I'm like, well, what, what community are you in? Yeah. If you're not in ours, yeah. like, I want to join yours. So I do, yeah. I do find it fascinating on where people congregate when it comes to cybersecurity stuff. Yeah. I want to talk about the anonymity thing, Jack, for a minute, because it, 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 it begs a couple of questions for me. Now, I know I've kind of heard the story about why why you care so much about the anonymity and why why you hide your, your real um, identity. And it makes a lot of sense. But for those that are listening tonight that have never heard that story, I think it, it would be really cool for them to hear that. And I have a follow-up question to that too. Well, I, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big privacy advocate. So I think that's just where I stand today. But starting out, um, throwing things on YouTube, I mean, I was just throwing anything at the wall, seeing what would stick when I was, you know, younger. Um, somebody likes some of the stuff I was doing and they noticed like, you know, a certain thing in the background, a mountain or a tree or a building or something. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I can figure out where that is in the world. And they did. And then they found like another shot with like a different angle. And they said, okay, well, if he shot that and he shot this, and this is probably where he took the video. And so they've lowered, they located like an address of where I was like filming from, that's which then they crazy. looked up the county records there and found my name. And then said, well, wonder where this guy works. And they uh, found where I worked. And then they messaged me at work saying, hey, I'm your biggest YouTube fan. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, like this is insane that you found all this stuff on me without me putting any of this th that I thought. Right. So I was really lucky yeah. to have this kind of experience early on to make me really reel back and pull back of what I'm putting out there and be extra cautious. And I also thought like, oh, if I'm starting a hacker com um, podcast, I should probably be secure myself. <laughs> and not, yeah. Yeah. I, because I'm sure somebody would want the feather in their hat if I'm, I hack Jack. 
So I, yeah. <laughs> you know, my website, I use a, a static site generator, which, you know, there's no database or username or anything there. So that's like, there's just no foothold to get into. And even if you did get into, there's nothing behind it. It's just straight HTML and JavaScript and CSS on there. No extra data, right? So the, uh, I, I take those precautions and not collect any user data at all of, of who my audience is or anything like that. And so yeah. I, I I make sure that uh, I'm I'm safe in that way. But yeah, I, privacy is 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 also a, b- a big important thing to me. Where I think that w- we should probably exercise our right to privacy because if we don't, I don't think companies or governments are going to give it to us. They're going to be like, oh, you don't care about your privacy, then we're not going to care about your privacy. Let's just yeah. uh, take all your stuff and we'll share it with people because you don't seem to care. And so the more that I make a stink about it and say, no, I do care. The more I think privacy uh, companies are going to say, okay, fine, we'll cater to you, you people who care, or they'll make new companies that say this is for the people who do care, and those are the companies that I want to be yeah. a part of because I think it's not all all is lost. I think there is quite a bit we can do still today to be private. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you hear that Facebook? Leave us alone. Instagram, <laughs> Meta, <laughs> leave us the hell alone with our privacy. Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, I, I did have one other question related to that. And, and I know, and I'm, I want to ask this because I know you're extremely involved in our community. And, and I guess the real question for me is when you're at events, because I'm sure you attend the bigger events like Black Hat, DEF CON, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, is that an area where you would go um, and, and remain unknown to other people that are there or how? How do you get the most out of an event like that, but while still remaining anonymous? Yeah, it's a good one, right? So if you notice my uh, Twitter uh, picture, I it's like a, a cartoon character of uh, a hat, a person, a mm-hmm. guy wearing a hat, a bandana over his face, like a mask and dark sunglasses. Well, that is the that is the costume I wear to these events, right? So oh, okay. even in person, you will not see my eyes or my nose or my mouth because I have this total... Um, and an anonymous, or, uh, you know, uh, pre- even in person, you're not going to see. So that's um, quite interesting because there's people who would like to get to know the man behind the mic and they're just like, darn it. Yeah. <laughs> even when I'm in front of you, like, <laughs> I can't see your face. This is frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know, sorry. But that, you know, that also kind of adds to that adds to the allure of it all yeah. too, though. You know, yeah. there's something to that. I don't, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but it's really cool to know, hey. Nobody's really seen this guy either. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's and so when people part, ask for selfies, cool. I say, uh, well, so, so a lot of people are asking for selfies. <clears throat> and I was like, no, 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 no. And then somebody's like, okay, well, what if we do like the Instagram travel selfie? And I was like, what's that? And they're like, where everyone just stands around with their feet and we all take a photo of our feet, like at the beach or whatever. But here we're just at <laughs> DEF CON. And I was like, okay, sure. You can have a, a f- selfie with my feet. <laughs> And so that kicked <laughs> off this hilarious. whole other thing of now, anytime somebody asks for a selfie, I say, no, but if you want to put your shoes and my shoes together, we can do that. And so there are that's, a lot of that's crazy. people proving that they met me because of my shoes, which now means that my shoes are becoming more popular than my face. <laughs> and so that's that means shoes me, have an identity. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm purposely like finding very, you know, stylish shoes that would look great in photos <laughs> because I know this. And then my socks starts, you know, looking ugly because it's not matching the shoes. And so I got to go matching socks with the shoes. <laughs> it's a whole thing to get yeah. like a, a shoe selfie with me. Yeah. You should All draw right. little now, faces on your shoes. I'm, I'm, ta- now, I'm taking a mental be, note of this. Piece of your shoe. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna need to get we're gonna need to get yeah. Jack's shoe size so we can make it some custum airbrushed, really kick ass shoes for DefCon. <laughs> that say cyber distortion on the sides. Well, the, you know, of course it's gonna say that somewhere, but <laughs> my shoes. But actually, say dark, my shoes actually say dark, say dark net net on batteries. the side. Oh, does it yes. really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, guys, look, I think we covered a lot of ground in segment two. Let's take a quick break, come back, wrap this up with a fun little game, and then uh, call this episode done. This has been a lot of fun. Ooh, a game. Oh, man, it's been awesome. All right, here we go. Some Darknet Diaries fun facts. Darknet Diaries currently has over 90 million audio downloads. They have over 20... 4 million views on YouTube across their channel that has over 354,000 subscribers. 
The YouTube channel was created in May of 2010, and the first published episode of Darknet Diaries was released on September 1st, 2017. So welcome back to the last segment of this very fun, entertaining episode. And we're going to do something fun with Jack. To finish this episode, we're going to do Kevin's favorite, the Would You Rather Quick Hits of questions. So, Jack, what this really is, is we're going to ask you a question in a series. I'll have five. Kevin will have five. But all you have to do is answer it with the first thing that pops into your head. Jeez. And I could tell you they're going to be interesting. Okay. They always are. <laughs> <laughs> so just prepare yourself on that one. In this case, Kevin actually threw a little twist in it, too. Most often, I don't know what this is. Kevin did this to me once. So if you hadn't seen it, our first episode of the of this season was on um, uh, deep fakes. And uh, Kevin sprung on me a series of uh, challenges where I had to guess which of his voice was uh, in a speech he was given. Was him for real or deep fake? I didn't even know this was happening. So this is a thing Kevin likes to do is these games where he tries to trick you. We'll see how well you do with it, but we're guaranteed to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. So here's, I'm going to start this with the hypothetical. So hypothetically, would you take something that removes your body's need for sleep if it was given to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Sign me up. Okay. I was right. just thinking the other day of what if there was a, a caffeine like pill that lets you sleep faster? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd 15 be 15 nice. minutes. I could sleep for 15 minutes and wake up and it'd be like I slept for six hours. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm thinking like 1.5x speed sleep, right? Oh, so, sure. so six hours, four <laughs> hours instead of eight hours. <laughs> yeah. that, 15 minutes could work too. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into some quick hit questions for you then. All right. Would you rather live forever? with an eyelash in your eye or spinach in your teeth? Spinach in my teeth. I think the eyelash would be pretty <laughs> annoying. <laughs> would you rather adopt a British accent every time you're having a serious conversation or laugh every time you're having, uh, every time someone cries? I'll take the British accent. I think the laugh might be inappropriate. <laughs> would you rather give up social media or eat the same dinner for the rest of your life? Um, I guess give up social media. Yeah, definitely. Oh. All right. Would you rather get a face tattoo of, of something of your choosing yeah. or a tattoo in a discreet area chosen by someone else? So you can hide it, but someone else did it. Oh Maybe my gosh. Someone else picks what it is. Uh, I guess let someone else pick in, a, oh. in another area. <laughs> he doesn't want to be Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you rather squeeze every time you say sneeze every time you say hi or have an urge to pee every time you ask a question? <laughs> I'd rather sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you ask too many questions in your line of work, man. Yeah. That, that would be really bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, go for it. All right, I'm going to start off with my hypothetical, and then we'll jump into my first five uh, quick hits. So, hypothetically, you find a book, and as you keep reading it, you discover it's actually about your life. You get to the point where you are right now reading the book. Do you flip the page and keep reading, or do you stop? Definitely keep reading. I have to see what what's going on. This is uh, exciting. You yeah, know what's what's yeah, funny so is I I, so I thought the other day of what if I just like randomly pick somebody's name in the episode and be like, "Hi, John. Thanks for tuning in." And I just start talking to John through like the whole episode, and like maybe there's five hundred thousand listeners, but like there's probably a few hundred Johns. And oh like, yeah! Why definitely. does he keep talking to me? Like this is so weird. <laughs> and it would just be those for those people, and then yeah, switch yeah. it like the next day to be like no John, so that when John shares it and says, "Do you hear this too?" And no, I don't hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I go? know he said my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be nuts. All right, first five quick hits. Would you rather be able to see 
10 years into your own future or six months into the future of the world? Six months into the future of the world. Yeah, that'd be so interesting because things are moving quickly right now, especially with AI. Yeah, and I'd be okay. able to move Would... faster than it, right? So I could position myself to be ready for that. If I knew what Always my future absolutely. was, then yeah. I can't really get ahead of that because that's what my future is. Yeah. Yeah, True. exactly. True. Okay. So would you rather have a driver to take you everywhere or a private chef who makes all your meals? Private chef. I think the I, I like food a lot. So, so check <laughs> yeah, the question you me asked. Me too. Me too. I can get myself where I'm going. Okay. Would you rather have to keep a terrible haircut for a month or let your mother dress you for a month? <laughs> mm. I think uh, I'll dress myself and have a terrible haircut. Man, that's a tough one, though. Gosh. I might God, it's it tough for me. I see the haircut. <laughs> I, I saw how my mother dressed me as a kid. There's no way I'm letting that woman dress me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would, would you rather be she, trapped in a... Did she make you put underwear on the top of your pants? Is that Dude, why I you're saying pictures. this? I got some pictures that are so embarrassing. I don't even. I don't even want to know they exist. Still, I had speedos when I was in middle school. Like I wore them to school. Oh, oh, oh my god, <laughs> dude! It epic. was it was cool epic. in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, would you rather be trapped in a rom com with people you hate, or trapped in a horror movie with people that you love? Hmm. I think. Trapped in a horror movie with people I love. It'd be nice to be with them and figure it out. Yeah. Figure out how to get the heck out of there. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one. Would you rather have to shower every day in scalding hot water or freezing cold water? <sighs> I think the scald... Gosh, the scalding... So it's going to give me what? A, some degree burn? And I just got to deal with that every day. I think I, so for a while I was taking cold showers. I think I could go with the cold showers, but my gosh, I'm not going to be happy. I'll be awake, but not happy. Well, Wim Hof would be proud of you though. <sighs> mm -hmm. He loves the cold shower. <laughs> All, right, All right, Jason, I'll throw it back at you. All right. I got a hypothetical for you. So Jack, would you take a weekend job for 200,000 a year? Again, a weekend job, 200,000 a year. To be a human scarecrow that chases birds from a field. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay, going to give well, up their weekends, man. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, the weekends are more <laughs> valuable to me, I think. I All agree. right, well, here we go. Would you rather be able to communicate via emojis or only be able to communicate via slang words? Emojis. Hmm. Okay, would you rather have a terrible memory or absolutely no common sense? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. That's a good one. Um, I guess terrible I memory. Know, have, Gosh, have it doesn't a terrible sound good, memory though. might make you look like you don't have common sense too. So. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, I think I'll take the terrible memory, but I don't like this. I think I think this is my most prized possession is my brain like of all the other yeah. things everything else i think could go away in the world and as long as i have my brain i'd be i can make myself happy and and be okay with the world but that that's a tough one to, to let go of yeah all right would you rather glow bright pink every time you're attracted to someone or glow bright red every time someone annoys you I'll glow bright pink i think that'd be a nice uh nice gift <laughs> oh, wow look at how much he likes you <laughs> Look at that aura. Look and at that aura you created. Too, right? Yeah, everyone <laughs> would know it. All right. Would you rather solve world hunger or global warming? Um, what is the calculus on that one? Yeah. Let's do global warming. Oh. Okay. And would you rather have to wear a bib every time you go out to eat or drink from a sippy cup? Um, and, and every time you go out, um, uh, uh, let me see, let me read this again. Would you rather re wear a bib every time you go out to eat or drink from a sippy cup every time you're at a bar? Hmm. I'll take the sippy cup. Yeah. Not a problem. 
<laughs> you could put, put a, mm -hmm. you could brand it and and sell them to people too as little trinkets. You know, it could be Darknet Diaries sippy cup. Yeah, yeah, that could become you a could. thing. That's true. That's true. That's there's value in that. that might right, go I got somewhere. one more hypothetical, and then I'm going to hand it over to Kevin. All right here's a here's a hypothetical. So Elon Musk personally asked you to be on the next SpaceX mission in the space. Let's go. Would you take Would you take him up yeah. on it? Oh, I, I love space. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right, All right Kevin. So you got you got steel balls too. I like that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. If you had to claw. This is hypothetical, by the way, not a. Okay, thank you. If if you had a clone of yourself, what would you want it to do? Um, let's. Uh, well, I mean, I have a million ideas of what I want to do, and I just don't have enough time to do it, right? So, you could work on my podcast while I do some of these other things, right? So, I want to write a book. I want to create some yeah. videos. I, I want to create some other companies. I think out there and. Uh, video games and all kinds of other stuff. And so if I was busy, if I had more time to do things, I would pu I'd put myself into those endeavors and make my other self do this stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what I'd do too. Make, make my clone do the re the hard and everyday tasks for me. All right. I'll jump into the, would you rather there's, I'll burn through these pretty quick. Would you rather lose a finger or have a headache every day for the rest of your life? Oh my gosh, I think that's a hard one because the finger is going to have the pain is going to go away pretty quickly, right? But the headache is going to be continual; it's chronic, mm -hmm. and yeah. living with chronic pain is just awful because it's never you never forget it. And and I think do I get to pick which finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a, we'll give you a pinky if that's what you think. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. I'll right. I'll take the finger loss. My gosh. Take the finger. Wow, yeah. that All is right. such a crazy idea to have a finger. You'd rather lose a finger than have a headache every day. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like you said, though, it's a one-time thing. I don't. It's a one-time thing. And hold, then the don't hold me away. to this. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. W would you rather have eyes that can film everything or ears that can record everything? Eyes that can film everything. Yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. Would you rather be trapped on a desert island with someone who never speaks or with someone who never shuts up like Jason? <laughs> <laughs> you love it. <laughs> I'll take the never speaks. Yeah, something to be said for peace and quiet. <laughs> All right. Would you rather have an assistant to replay to all of your to I'm sorry, to reply to all of your emails? Or an assistant to do all of your grocery shopping. Reply to all my emails. I've got quite a lot of them. Yeah, and actually, I actually enjoy grocery shopping. That's pretty therapeutic. Sometimes I don't like doing it, so it's it's a tough <laughs> one for me. It really is a tough one. But I've got so many emails now. I, I I get like hundreds of DMs and emails every day, and I just can't get to them all. So if somebody could do that for me, woo. Yeah. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, thank you for responding back to us when we reached out about coming on the podcast. I didn't think I'd hear from you because I knew I knew you got hundreds a day. So <laughs> again, thanks. Yeah, I like podcasts. And the last one. Yeah. Hey, believe me, we do too. <laughs> we, we we feel you. All right. Last one. Um, would you rather be able to breathe fire like a dragon or freeze things like Elsa from Frozen? Mm, I think the breathing fire would be good. Heck yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah. Like, you, think you could do something about the cold showers then too, just breathe it all over yeah. your arms after you're done. Mm -hmm. All right. The last hypothetical. Oh, this is, this is a good one. Would you go three months without shaving, brushing your teeth, or using deodorant for a hundred thousand dollars? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, why not? Uh, right. Brushing the teeth is the is the complicated one there. I don't mind being dirty, stinky, or look bad or smell bad to people, but that is a health issue now when you're talking about teeth brushing. So no, hold on, I might not do it now. Oh, he wasn't even going to talk about the funky breath. He was just like, yeah, it could be a health issue. I don't want to lose my teeth. Yeah, if your teeth, <laughs> if I have to like get teeth surgery or, or you know extractions or something because I wasn't taking care of it, now I've got to deal with all that after this, and I don't know if that's worth it. Yeah, I don't mind yeah, the sure. awkwardness, yeah. the social awkwardness. The other day, I went on a run and it was cold, and I, and I 
thought I don't need my sweater because it's sunny, but I and I would warm up, but I didn't. And on like a quarter mile of the way in, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm still freezing. And so I put my hands in my shirt and, you know, pull, tuck the arms in and I was running with like no arms and I was still cold, <laughs> like a half mile into it. So then I put my arms in my hands in my pockets while inside my shirt and I was running for miles like that <laughs> and nobody would like make eye contact with me or say, Hey, or anything. It was just very awkward. And I did not mind. Yeah. And everyone was driving by saying, what is wrong with yeah. this guy? Oh, <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's all great. right well that 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 was awesome guys I, I i i love that i don't even give jason the questions so that i can see how you're both going to respond to those kind of questions that's what yeah. makes it even more fun yeah so yeah. thank you for yeah. playing along with that, that that's was that's fun. one thank of those you. things that we just get stupid with every now and then <laughs> You know, Jack, this has been a really fun episode for us to do, to get to talk to you, know you a little bit better, hear about your story and what drives you in your storytelling. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to have you on. It's just exciting for Kevin and I to be able to, to have this experience with you and talk through all of this stuff and and just kind of learn some of the, the things that you've gone through to get to where you are today and why that's meaningful for you. I can already tell you, based on what you told us, Kevin's stupid questions are going to be twirling around in your head and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have answered it that way. I should have probably thought about answering it like this as you're doing your walk or your run or contemplating, yeah. you know, things tomorrow. So nah, you can thank Kevin for that. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, yeah, we'll give him, we'll give you your pinky right. back too. If you change your mind on the finger, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this has been fun guys. Uh, again, as always, Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on this on this show, and for um, you know just having a little community with us in cybersecurity and sharing what you know and why you do it. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And you know, everyone out there, look forward to our next episode. We will continue to try to bring as good a guest. We may not be able to pull that off the rest of the season now, but we will certainly <laughs> try. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for having and me on. Jack, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. And thank you for taking the time to do it. Um, dude, we wish, we, we wish you nothing but the best uh, over the next five, 10 years. Keep kicking ass. You're, you're, you're the best at this. Um, keep growing. Keep doing what you do. Um, and hey, man, blessings on what you're doing. You're, you're, you're really giving back to the community and you're really helping a lot of people out with what you do. So thank cool. you for I'm, that I'm as well. I'm glad to be there to help people. And uh, anyone who wants to meet up at DEF CON this year, I'll be going. Look for Sounds announcements good. I want a picture. I want a picture with our feet. Okay. We got to yeah. do that yeah, while we're it. out there. Yeah, get a foot picture. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to sign off, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Take care, everybody. I'm Ashley. I'm an artificially generated avatar with the ability to manipulate your mind via the power of my intelligence botnets. Let me prove it to you. You're about to click on that subscribe button and then you'll click on the notification bell so you don't miss when Kevin and Jason drop future episodes of the Cyber Distortion Podcast. So, go ahead. That's right. Slide your mouse over slowly and gracefully. There you go. Now click. See? That wasn't so bad now was it? I'd like to thank you for listening to today's amazing podcast episode on YouTube or your favorite audio streaming platform, and don't forget to tell your friends. Oh, and remain diligent my cyber friends. The world is a very scary place.